This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Say what you will about Grisea, it's not boring. <laughs> Have you ever made an irreparable mistake? Yes. You know, done something that can't be undone? Yes. Doesn't have to be anything particularly dramatic. Maybe you hit a line drive into your neighbor's window as a kid. Good enough. Remember that crushing moment of dread? That sense of hopelessness? I don't think I'm ever going to feel that way again. It's not that I don't make mistakes. I've simply come to realize that every problem has its solution. When you break someone's window, you just apologize. If that's not enough, you compensate them for the damage. Either way, if you're tactful enough to stand over a box of pastries and an apologetic note afterward, there probably won't be any hard feelings. Even if you happen to run into somebody who isn't so easily placated, there are countless alternative ways of resolving the situation. Sure, these fiends end up costing you a little in the short term, but if you handle it properly, there won't be any lasting repercussions. And once you get the knack of solving problems, you'll find yourself anticipating them ahead of time. So the door you ne need opened is fastened shut tight with torque screws, Hardly anything to panic over, just twist it out with your wrench. Plan a few moves ahead and you'll have a lot less stress in general. It's not nearly as hard as it sounds, just takes a little experience. On the downside, once you have the insight necessary to predict the future, you'll never be able to watch a Rube Goldberg machine in innocent amazement again. But on the whole, I find that an acceptable trade-off. Not to say that I have all the answers. Every once in a while, I do find myself at a loss for a coping strategy. More often than not, this is the direct result of interaction with those highly unpredictable variables known as women. Wow. That was a weird, random, wall monologue for no reason. The beginning of summer vacation brings a slightly different atmosphere to the Mahama Academy uh, campus. Our residents may not be the most uniformly diligent students in the world, but I suppose attending class is still a bit stressful. With the burdens of academic expectations temporarily lifted, everyone seems noticeably relaxed. Unfortunately, there is a but here. A problem I never saw coming. Not to make this sound more dramatic than it is, it's not like a butterfly flapped its wings in Brazil and launched a tornado in my direction. No, it's a much simpler situation. Much simpler, but unfortunately no less of a pain in the ass. I'm lounging around on the lobby sofa one morning when Sakaki walks up and clears her throat. Seems as though the time's finally come. I turn to face her, carefully establishing steady eye contact. Oh, hey, Yumiko, what's up? Okay. Yeah, not a problem. Ask whatever you want. Oh, is this about how Michiru asked to kiss me? Oh, I'll answer all about that. Judging from Sakaki's uncharacteristic hesitation, this is actually significantly more awkward for her than it is for me. After running a hand through her hair several times, she finally manages to move on. You're gonna have to be more specific. Hmm, do something. Could you be more specific? I'm always doing something. Breathing, digesting food, performing basic me metabolic functions. But somehow I don't think that's what you want to know. Maybe, but I can't provide an accurate answer without knowing exactly what you're getting at. Oh yeah, that! Thought as much. Honestly, I'm surprised it took this long for one of the others to say something. Ever since that day, Mitra has been acting very strangely around me. I suppose... Yeah, you could say I did something to her. I don't mind telling you, but I'd recommend not launching any silly investigations. It's not going to help anyone. We kissed. Sakaki's tense expression instantly crumbles. Guess she wasn't quite prepared for anything after all. Her mouth hangs open like a nutcracker with a broken hinge. Uh, what's with that face? You're putting your beauty to waste. Better be careful, you might get auctioned off as a lesser work of munch. Now here's where I want people's theories. Is she freaking out now because she's like, wait, you're... You and, like, Michiru are, in a, like, getting in a relationship, that's really weird. Or because she wanted to be in a relationship with us. You decide. 
I kissed Michiru. For a certain period of time, our mucoid membranes came into contact. You do know what a kiss is, I assume. Yes, Yuji! People know what kisses are. Talk about old-fashioned. It's just a kiss, right? Do a man and a woman need to be in a relationship to mash their lips together when the whim strikes them? Um, kind of! It's really weird if you don't! Or maybe you're going to start marching in outlaw premarital sex rallies now. No doubt blushing daintily all the way. If you're in need of a placard to express your virginal... You know, folks, being a virgin is not an insult. Like, at all. <laughs> Maybe you can grab that sign from the campus gardens. It's already got Please Don't Pick the Flowers printed on the front, so you won't even need to alter it. Can you slash this guy at the box cutter? <laughs> Settle down, Sakaki. There were no sugary sweet developments of the sort you're imagining. It's just a reflex test. A kind of experiment, almost. Nothing to get yourself worried about. <laughs> Yeah, Yumiko's freaking out the appropriate amount, I'd say. Hmm. Maybe it's hard to believe, but sometimes a kiss doesn't mean anything on the emotional level. Well, that was a... That was a weird kiss that Yuto had. I'll take that under advisement. Oh, that's, that's not a word that's an insult to me. Not in the slightest. With those words, Sakaki leaves the lobby behind, shaking her head in bemusement. Again, with this responsibility business. Amine said something similar not too long ago, come to think of it. Seems men are expected to take responsibility for quite a wide range of things these days. Hell, if one of the girls caught me throwing a chewed-up piece of gum in the garbage can, I'd probably become public enemy number one. I'll have to practice letting my candy down gently so as to avoid gen general con condemnation. Sorry for tossing you aside like that, but our relationship was never meant to last. Don't think badly of me, Frozen Apple Mint. No matter how much time we spent together, it's all bland and flavorless now. Those sweet early days will never return. <laughs> um, Makina, I'm still probably the second most normal person here. Didn't notice you there, Makina. Do me a favor and forget you saw that, alright? I was just amusing myself. There wasn't even any gum in there. Just a little joke! You understand? Aha. Uh -huh. Makina, my friend... Are you aware that effective punnery involves more than just randomly mashing together words that sound alike? Try repeating it a thousand times. Maybe I'll be able to crack a smile. No, Sachi, not you. Uh, yes, Machina with the attention span of a fly. No, she'll actually do it. Michiru? Don't know. Why don't you try calling her for her and see if she comes running? <laughs> you sounded like a, a wildebeest stampede. Oh, hey, Michiru. What's up? Michiru's opening words are delivered with the usual powerful Sundari spirit, but after noticing me, her tone rapidly slides down the scale into timid. By the end of the sentence, her voice is only barely audible. ガムはガムに決まってるじゃない。それには私は元気よ。何の問題もないわ。好き。それは良かったのよさ。ねね、チルチル。新逆考えた。パインがパインパイン。どうなのよさ。パインパイン。あんたのダジャレなんて面白く
あとでちょっと笑ってあげてもいいのよ。マカナ doesn't seem to understand the concept of a pun particularly, particularly well. There's a difference between puns and just wordplay.、ね、puns can be wordplay, but not all wordplay is puns. <laughs> She's just chanting it in the background! I wonder if you actually listen until she says it a thousand times if she'll stop. Just like, what exactly? Seems pretty obvious that my presence is posing an obstacle to smooth communication. Deciding it best to withdraw for the moment, I silently rise from the couch. My presence seems to be bothering Michiru. Thought I'd give you guys some space. Are、uh, you sure about that? This is how it's been lately. Not to state the obvious, but ever since that second kiss, Mitra has been acting strangely self conscious around me. Might sound vaguely romantic, but it's more like she's keeping a wary distance. She's still chanting it. I see. Alright then. <laughs> yeah, Sachi, you really need to take a breath. Bishiru walks off, swift, stiffly swinging her left arm in unison with her left leg and her right arm with her left or right leg. Yeah. Objectively speaking, the girl seems to be two steps away from a downright panic attack. Wonder how our younger friends are taking all this. <laughs> honk! Honk! This is why she trips all the time. <laughs> And that's, re that's really what it's all about. <laughs> it's not about practically moving around, it's about looking cool like a cyborg. What? No, they don't. They don't sound anything like cyborg hot dog. They don't sound even slightly the same. This must be one of those jokes that doesn't translate properly. <laughs> I love food and stuff. It's where I get all my food and most of my stuff. Ugh, not sloppy Joes. <laughs> oh, yes, Sachi loves sharks. Seems I didn't get to worry on that front. Makina is already completely distracted by that avant garde way of walking, and as usual, Sachi was roped into playing alone. Oh, the saddest thing about this timeline is that Sachi doesn't get to rent the shark floaty. Those two don't seem particularly concerned about Michiru's behavior, but there is a certain busybody who probably won't take such a carefree attitude. Oh, hi, Mom. 
What's up, Amine? I'm getting the sense that you might have something you want to say to me. Why is it why is it always my fault that other people act weirdly? Granted, a lot of the time it is, but still. I suppose I can't deny that. But there's not much I can do about it. Is this your only, like, method of talking to me, Amine? It's just like, if you're a man, you'll do this. Like, come on. Get, get a new thing. Lord, again with the responsibility? No, you don't apologize if you haven't done anything wrong. If I tell her I'm sorry for something I didn't do, it'll be insincere. Fine, fine. At this rate, my tranquil school days seem likely to take an unpleasant turn for the tense. I suppose I'll have to take your considerate advice. Understood. Rest assured, I'll resolve this post-haste. Or, so I said, but how exactly am I supposed to approach this? The problem is entirely on Michiru's end right now. Somehow or other, I need to get this girl to relax a little. Take care of it, huh? Easy for her to say, but I guess I have to try at this point. Thinking it over isn't going to get me anywhere. Deciding to play things by ear, I head straight for Michiru's room. Michiru, I'd like a word. Not sure I follow, but I I think I have a pretty normal look on my face at the moment. It's something out of the ordinary. Am I not allowed to have a normal expression now? That sounds like a nuisance. <laughs> you want me to back off then? This far enough? <laughs> this far enough? This far enough? And so I ended up all the way out here. <laughs> Hi, it's me. You're probably wondering how I got into this situation. <laughs> Just playing around, pay me no mind. <laughs> that was a great transition. Incidentally, Chizuru, uh, when do you think a man needs to take responsibility? You're gonna have to be more specific. That I did. However, it didn't involve impregnating them. Well, good! Hmm. An interesting argument. Yeah, that, that's fair. You don't say. That one seems to have worries of her own. Well then, let's see. What's my next move? In the end, I make the bold and resolute decision to read a book until the heat dies down a bit. At times like these, one might get the impression that I spend every waking moment of the day I possibly can reading, but for the record, I'm not as severe a bookworm as Michiru seems to think. To be sure, I spend an unusually high proportion of my time with books, but I also exercise, listen to music, and watch movies like anyone else. Might be a little hard to believe, but I particularly enjoy the radio. Listening to R Rosini through a veil of static resistant to even the most careful dial twiddling adds a certain resonance you won't find anywhere else. Oh, hi. Unexpectedly, this time Michiru is the one who approaches me. Hmm? What's wrong? You want me to take my responsibility as well? Yeah, 
となんだろうねあんたねそのうーん。<sighs> First she drives me off, I just want to wrap this whole mess up and get things back to normal ASAP. Yeah, sorry about that. You're talking about what happened the other day, right? That was my bad. Forget it. Forget it means forget it. I'd appreciate it if you could wipe the whole incident from your memory. That said, I do understand that it's probably going to be a little difficult to pull that off right now. In that case, just act like you don't remember. Or pretend it never happened. That should keep the others from squawking at us. I think life will be simpler and easier that way for both of us. What do you say? Something wrong? Okay. Hmm. Back to the normal Sundere, eh? Glad to see you've cheered up. She's throwing out the baka word now. Don't get all worked up. Somebody might come over to see what's going on if you keep shrieking like that. They'd probably misinterpret your red into eyes as evidence that I've upset you in some way. Yeah, they're blue. They are, actually. Go look in a mirror. <laughs> um, I heard somebody loudly yell Baka, so I knew who it was. What's going on? Yeah, no problems. You can go back now. Well, that's that! Glad we've cleared everything up. Nice work, Kazumi Yuji. Problem resolved. And so the curtains drew closed on this problem play. My peaceful school life was salvaged from its moment of peril. Or, so I'd like to say, but that's not how it turned out. All's that well that ends well, yes, but my problems hadn't yet run their course. If anything, they were only getting started.